Hello MotoGP fans, welcome back to ZNGP today. Valentino Rossi, a legendary figure in MotoGP, has raised concerns about Ducati's decision to sign Marc Marquez for its factory team in 2025. Rossi's comments reflect a sense of betrayal among Ducati's current and aspiring riders, shedding light on the potential repercussions of this high-profile move. As Marc Marquez continues his debut season with Ducati's Grezzini team, the quest for his first win on the Italian machine remains a key storyline in the 2024 MotoGP season. With 10 rounds left to navigate, Marquez's pursuit of victory is becoming a focal point of the championship. Let's explore where Marquez might find his breakthrough win. With Trackhouse Racing securing Raul Fernandez for 2025, speculation continues about his future teammate. Team principal Davide Brivio recently shared insights into the discussions surrounding potential riders, including Joe Roberts, amid ongoing rumors about the second seat. Don't forget to click subscribe button and the bell icon for MotoGP news update. Valentino Rossi has voiced his reservations about Ducati's recent decision to bring Marc Marquez into its factory team, a move that disrupted the team's previously established rider progression plan. Rossi expressed bewilderment at the choice, suggesting it undermines the efforts and aspirations of Ducati's existing riders. I have not finished understanding it. Ducati had an interesting system in place, with a pyramid that allowed young riders to progress. That's how Pecco, Banyaya, was brought up, and both Martin and Marco Bezzecchi were also waiting for it. And suddenly Ducati decided to bring Mark in. Quote from Valentino Rossi. Rossi's criticism highlights a significant shift in Ducati's strategy. The Italian veteran points out that the team's previous approach, which supported the rise of young talents through its development system, has been overshadowed by the decision to include Marquez. This move has potentially jeopardized the career progression of Ducati's current and future riders. It's normal that the riders feel betrayed. From one moment to the next they no longer count, so no wonder they consider the choice of Marquez a joke. Rossi's comments reflect a deep sense of betrayal among riders who had been part of Ducati's development structure. The abrupt change in the team's plans not only disrupts their career paths, but also undermines the loyalty and commitment they have shown to Ducati. Despite the turmoil caused by Marquez's signing, Rossi remains confident in Francesco Bagnaia's ability to compete effectively. Rossi asserts that Bagnaia's achievements and current form should not be overshadowed by the addition of Marquez to the Ducati team. Pecco is ready. He is making a difference and has managed to raise the bar. He is a two-time world champion and is fighting for a third title, but in my opinion, he didn't need Mark in the box to prove that he is number one. Rossi's support for Banyaya underscores his belief that the reigning world champion's prowess and dedication do not require validation from Marquez's presence. Rossi suggests that Banyaya's credentials are strong enough to stand on their own, irrespective of Marquez's arrival. The decision to sign Marquez has had notable repercussions beyond Ducati's internal dynamics. The fallout has led to significant changes in team affiliations and rider lineups across the grid. Promac Racing, which was initially expected to benefit from Ducati's support, has signed with Yamaha for the 2025 season. Meanwhile, Rossi's team will receive factory Ducati support for Fabio Di Antonio and Marco Bezzecchi, a protege of Rossi's VR46 Academy, will join Jorge Martin at the factory Aprilia team. The fallout from this decision has been significant, impacting team alliances and rider placements across the grid. Rossi concluded. Rossi's comments highlight the broader implications of Ducati's strategic shift, including its impact on team alliances and the realignment of riders across different teams. These changes reflect a dynamic and evolving MotoGP landscape influenced by high-stakes decisions. Valentino Rossi's critique of Ducati's decision to sign Marc Marquez reveals a complex web of emotions and strategic shifts within the MotoGP community. As Ducati navigates this new chapter, the effects of these decisions will continue to unfold, shaping the future of the sport and the careers of its riders. 
Stay tuned for further updates and insights as the MotoGP season progresses. Marc Marquez has shown promising form in his first year with Ducati, scoring nine podiums across sprints and Grand Prix races. This represents a significant improvement compared to his final season with Honda, where he only managed four podiums. Despite this progress, Marquez's wait for a victory continues, with his last win coming at the 2021 Emilia-Romagna GP, a gap of 1,020 days. Marquez has come close to winning several races in 2024. Notably, he was just 0.372 seconds behind Francesco Bagnaia at the Spanish GP. However, stronghold venues like Circuit of the Americas, Coda, and Saxenring did not yield the results Marquez hoped for, with technical issues and challenging weekends affecting his performance. We were very close in these first 10 races to win, or to have my first victory with the Ducati. But in the two good circuits for me, Austin and Saxenring, they were very difficult weekends, especially in Austin when I was leading with that brake problem, Marquez told. Despite these challenges, Marquez remains optimistic, acknowledging that Ducati's GP24 model has shown improvements over the GP23 he is currently riding. He is targeting consistent top 4 or top 5 finishes and hopes to break his winless streak in the remaining races. Looking ahead, several circuits offer promising prospects for Marquez. The upcoming Austrian GP at the Red Bull Ring, though traditionally challenging for Marquez, could see some potential. Despite never having won there, Marquez's resilience and adaptability could play a crucial role. However, the Aragon GP stands out as Marquez's most promising opportunity. Known for his past success at this track, Marquez won five times at Aragon between 2016 and 2019, with his most dominant victory occurring in 2019. His performance here, even with an injured arm in 2021, suggests that the circuit plays to his strengths. Following Aragon, the back-to-back -back Mizano rounds could also favor Marquez. While Mizano has been competitive for Ducati, Marquez's experience and the Ducati's performance at this circuit could align well, especially after a strong showing last year with Honda. Our target is at top four, five and if we can fight for the podium as we did in other races, Marquez added. Beyond these circuits, the Emilia-Romagna GP at Mizano and the Malaysian GP at Sepping are also worth noting. Marquez's fourth-place finish on his Ducati debut in Qatar suggests that Mizano might be a favorable venue. His familiarity with the track and the Ducati bike's capabilities could enhance his chances of securing a victory. In contrast, Indonesia has been less favorable, with past issues affecting his performance. However, tracks like Japan, Australia, and Thailand have historically been strong for Marquez, despite recent challenges. These venues could provide opportunities for Marquez to leverage his experience and adapt his riding style to secure a win. At the moment, on average, we are 4-5 seconds slower in the race, compared to the GP24. So we need to improve more than 2 or 3 tenths per lap if we want to fight with them, Marquez concluded. As Marc Marquez navigates the remainder of the 2024 MotoGP season, several tracks present potential opportunities for his first win with Ducati. With his history of success at certain circuits and the ongoing development of the Ducati GP23, Marquez's quest for victory is set to be a thrilling subplot in the championship's final rounds. Stay tuned as the season progresses and Marquez continues his pursuit of a landmark victory. During the Dutch Grand Prix weekend, TNT Sport featured a segment with track house team principal Davide Brivio, highlighting discussions with Moto2 rider Joe Roberts. Brivio questioned Roberts about his readiness for MotoGP, and Roberts expressed confidence in his ability to adapt to any bike. How do you feel thinking about MotoGP? Do you feel yourself as ready? Quote from Davide Brivio. I feel ready. I feel confident to ride any bike right now. Robert answered. Ahead of the British Grand Prix, speculation intensified regarding Robert's future with Trackhouse. Reports suggested that AI Ogura might be joining Trackhouse, 
while outgoing KTM rider Jack Miller was also mentioned as a potential candidate. Despite this, John Hopkins, Robert's coach, maintained that Robert's prospects for a MotoGP seat remain intact. Joe's hopes of going to GP definitely aren't diminished. We're just focused on winning as many as we can and get the championship for the team. Quote from John Hopkins. Joe Roberts is currently third in the Moto2 standings after 10 rounds in 2024, despite recent setbacks including an injury and a crash at the British Grand Prix. His performance, including three podiums and one win this season, continues to make him a strong contender for a MotoGP seat. As Trackhouse Racing finalizes its rider lineup, the future remains uncertain for Joe Roberts amidst the swirling rumors. With a strong season in Moto2 and ongoing discussions, Roberts' MotoGP aspirations continue to be closely watched. Stay tuned for further updates on rider announcements and team developments. Thanks for watching ZNGP today, and this is your MotoGP news update. See you in the next video.